Have you ever wondered who are the most powerful beings in Greek mythology? Yeah, me too. Someone should make a video about that. Anyways, thanks for watching! No, but seriously now, let's talk about some of the most powerful beings in Greek mythology. However, before we begin, I have one thing to say. You are not going to find the 12 Olympians in this video. Because, yes, someone like Zeus should be in this list. You and I both know that, but that's exactly why I'm excluding him. That's exactly why I'm excluding all the 12 Olympians. Because if I was including the Olympians, you could right now predict who is going to be in the video. And if that was the case, why would you even watch this? Greek mythology is more than just the 12 Olympians after all, so let's give the spotlight to other people. Having said that, we can begin right now, but before we do so, I want to make some quick honorable mentions. These are names I considered for this video, but ultimately decided not to include. First, the Harpe and the Aegis. Both are pretty strong, but I already talk about them in my video on how powerful Zeus is. Second, Rumor, the embodiment of rumors. A tenuous argument could be made for Rumor being omniscient, but ultimately I decided not to include include her. And the last honorable mention, the Demiurgos of Plato. He would be really strong, but I didn't want to derail my video or comment section with pointless philosophical discourse. Now, with that out of the way, let's actually begin. Number 12. Euphemus. Euphemus was one of the many sons of Poseidon and he had the power to run really fast. Allegedly, he was the fastest man who has ever lived. This would make him faster than Hercules, Hercules could keep up with Ares, and Ares is stated to be the fastest of the Olympian gods, meaning that Euphemus would be ridiculously fast. Now, obviously, this is pure wank on my part, because Euphemus was stated to be fast, yes, so fast he could run on water, but he's never implied to be as fast as a god. That's ridiculous. But if you take this statement literally, he technically would be. Number 11. The Plant of Prometheus As the eagle was devouring the titan Prometheus, some of his divine blood fell to the ground, and from that soil grew a magical plant. The plant has the power to make anyone completely invulnerable, and the strongest person on earth for 24 hours. Number 10. Orpheus According to myth, he was such an amazing musician that even trees and rocks would follow him so that they could listen to his music. In fact, even the fates themselves were charmed by his music. Be it a god, an inanimate thing, or the arbiters of destiny, nothing in the whole of Greek mythology can resist listening to the music of Orpheus. Number 9. Steropis, Brontis, and Argis. These are the three cyclops that crafted the Thunderbolt of Zeus. They also made the trident of Poseidon and the helmet of Hades. Those are three very powerful artifacts and the fact that these cyclops can make such things is the reason why they are in this list. And speaking of making things, number 8. Gaia. Gaia is in this list for the same reason the Cyclops are. She can make some really strong things. First of all, she gave birth to the Cyclops. She also produced the Harpy. Also, Gaia made Typhoon. And she made the Gigantes, who were born with the special ability of not being able to be killed by gods. If she's given the chance, you better believe she's going to produce something absolutely ridiculous. Number 7. The Hecatonchires. The Hecatonchires are physically the strongest beings in Greek mythology. So strong were they that the Olympians were terrified of them. When it comes to pure, raw, brute, physical strength, the Hecatonchires are the strongest. Number 6. The Child from Gaius's Prophecy So there's this female titan called Metis. According to Gaia, Metis was destined to give birth to a son more powerful than Zeus. To prevent this, Zeus swallows Metis, so the child is never born. But if he would have been born, he would have been more powerful than Zeus. And to me, that's enough to put that hypothetical child in this list. Number 5. Nyx and her children Nyx is the embodiment of night. And according to the Iliad, Zeus himself fears making her upset. Now, I did mention her children too, so let's talk about them. Nyx had a bunch of children. Just like her, her children were the embodiment of different concepts, like Thanatos, the embodiment of death, and Hypnos, the embodiment of sleep. The latter can make anyone fall asleep, even Zeus. Based on this, one could argue that all the children of Nyx have power that affect even the Olympian gods. Number 4. The Fates The Fates were the arbiters of destiny. What they said was gospel, and no one could go against it. This of course makes them extremely powerful, because they control the fate of both men and gods. Number 3. Chaos According to the Theogony of Hesiod, Chaos is the first thing. He is ultimately the source of every other being in this list. Now, Chaos is not a sentient being. He has no agency. He's just the thing where other things come from. But on paper, he would be extremely powerful. Number 2. 
fun is. Fun is, is simply put, big strong. Now, the easiest way for you to understand why his number is so big is by understanding his genealogy. So, in the very beginning, there was nothing, and even less than nothing. From this absence of thing came two elements, earth and water. Now, do not think of them in the classical sense. More than elements, these are primordial forces. One binds things together and the other one spreads them apart. These two elements then come in contact with each other and create Ananki, the embodiment of necessity, and Kronos, the embodiment of time. Now, this is not Kronos the Titan, this is Kronos Time. Today, they are commonly equated. You will even hear people refer to Kronos as Father Time, but this is incorrect. Kronos the Titan is not Kronos Time. They are separate entities. The easiest way for you to differentiate them is that Kronos Time has an H in his name, while Kronos the Titan doesn't. Another major difference is that Kronos the Titan is understood to be a big guy for you, while Kronos Time is a giant snake with wings. So they are very different. Anyways, Ananki and Kronos, who I'm going to refer to as Time to make it easier, they both combine and give birth to Chaos. Yes, the Chaos from the last spot. And also Ether. Now, Ether is soul. Not the soul of anyone in particular, but soul in general. Ether is spirituality itself. Then, chaos, ether and time combine and they form an egg. The egg then hatches and Phanes is born. As you can see, Phanes is the result of three primeval and very powerful entities, and that's why he's big strong. But is his number the biggest? Obviously not, otherwise he would be number one. So, number one. Aritos Arki. Remember when we were talking about Phanes and I mentioned that at first there was nothing? Well, that's the Aritos Arki. It is the thing that is when there isn't anything, and it is the thing that will be when everything is not. You could say that this is the first level of reality, the foundation of all creation. Everything in this list ultimately comes from the Aritos Arki, and that's why it is the strongest. Just like with Chaos, this isn't sentient, it has no agency, but if you think about it, it would be pretty strong. Now, as as you can see, the last three spots in this video are all basically the same thing. They are all the creative force, all under a different name, but the same thing in the end. So if you want, you could consider the top three as one and the same, but if we did that, this wouldn't be a top 12. So let's pretend they are separate. Anyways, I think that's gonna do it. I hope this video is exactly 12 minutes long, because you know, there's 12 Olympian gods, so that's why the video is a top 12. 12 Olympians, top 12. It would be really cool if I managed to make this video exactly 12 minutes long, but I don't think I'll be able to pull that off without doing something scummy and shady like wasting your time with pointless meandering. Anyways, I don't have anything else to say, so thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.